For a quick look back now, let's go over to Tucker Hope at the Recon Wall. Tucker. Thanks very much, Brooke. As you may remember from your history books, Congress put the current American dream in place in 1894. Prior to that, the American dream had been to have a cellar filled with barley corn and to die in a manner not involving horrific disease or torture. But it wasn't long before the allure of the new dream started to fade, as evidenced in this letter written by a riverboat porter in 1901. I could toil to heft twice as many sacks of sugar each hour, but never would I rise above my lowly stature. Better than to drink and nap. By 1940, more than half the nation had completely given up trying, a phenomenon addressed in popular radio dramas from the time. Jimmy, I've been working on this here ranch since before you were born. Wow. Yep, I'm too lazy to go out and do something that might make me happy. Ah, oh, jeez. In the 60s, a combined 100 million people gave up the dream after smoking their first joint and deciding everything was pretty much fine as is. Then in 1984, millions of Americans gave up the dream en masse when the song 99 Red Balloons made them realize that they would probably all die in a nuclear war anyway. By 2008, only three people still believed in the American dream. That is until FedEx employee Ramona Ellis gave up hers after getting pregnant from her manager, Theo. Then last year, fifth grader Paul Wang gave up in the American dream when he told a group of classmates that he wanted to become a great scientist and cure cancer, after which he was called a fag and pushed into a mud puddle. Bringing us to today, when Edward Tuffy gave up as well, finally extinguishing the last vestige of the once great American dream. Brooke. Thanks, Tucker. You bet. We'll, of course, have more updates from Pennington throughout the evening. Unfortunately, we need to head back to Tucker Hope for a look at some of the other big stories going on right now. Tucker? Thanks very much, Brooke. Personally, I have no use for the American dream. If I stay exactly where I am for the rest of my life, I will be a very happy man. All right, first, let's start off in Las Cruces, New Mexico, where the cash-strapped NASA program has launched a new mission to explore New Mexico. A robotic probe set out on its course for Albuquerque at 1014 this morning and began to collect soil samples through the use of its mechanical arm. NASA Administrator Michael Palasik said the Interstate 25 Odyssey project will provide vital information about the dirt in New Mexico and is much cheaper than actually going to space. The probe has already sent back some incredible footage of the side of the highway. Very cool. Now let's take a look at Pittsburgh, Indiana, where champion NASCAR driver Jeff Gordon has donated $2 million to a new anti-illiteracy charity aimed at teaching Jeff Gordon to read. Gordon kicked off the project, which aims to stamp out Gordon's illiteracy in his lifetime, with a star-studded event where celebrities like Susan Sarandon and Kelsey Grammer read Mr. Gordon some of their favorite books while he sat on a so-called learning rug. At the event, Gordon announced, teaching me to read is the most important investment Americans can make in my future. Now, over to Washington, D.C., where Vice President Joe Biden has made an announcement that he will be releasing his Secret Service detail and replacing them with a squad of sexy female bodyguards. The team includes sharpshooter and demolitions expert Vivica Clay, Azura Moon, a Malaysian martial arts expert, and champion lightweight boxer Hera Rodriguez. Though the Vice President's bodyguard roster is currently full, Biden said he is always on the lookout for new talent. Anyone wishing to be considered for the team can upload a resume of fighting skills and a photo of themselves in a bikini to the White House website. Brooke. Thank you, Tucker. Now let's turn our attention back to the death of the American dream.